Tonight on DC News Now at 9, the Wizards and Capitals, a big step closer to moving to Virginia. A day after lawmakers approve a deal to relocate the teams, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin expected to speak about what could be a monumental move. Happening now, a final vote to bring data centers to one of Virginia's largest counties. Oh, we won't sleep until tomorrow afternoon at this rate. We're live as the marathon meeting in Prince William County is set to go well overnight. A Prince George's County school bus burst into flames on the Beltway this morning. How the bus driver jumped into action to help students to safety. Hi everyone, dragging chilly conditions, but more sunshine in the forecast. Details coming up. Metro's budget crisis could spell trouble for riders and workers. It would, you know, dramatically change Washington for the worse. What could happen if WMATA does not get the funding it needs? We begin at 9 with breaking news. A battle between D.C. and Virginia over the Wizards and the Capitals. They have to lawmakers advance a proposal to lure the two teams to Potomac Yard in Alexandria. We're now hearing from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser about legislation that would keep both the NBA and NHL teams in D.C. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Susan Tran in for Thasmeen Mahfouz. Mayor Bowser and D.C. Council Chairman Phil Mendelson, they unveiled this bill that would include $500 million for renovations over three years and a lease extension that would keep the Wizards and Capitals until the end of 2052. And meanwhile, I've learned Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin and monumental sports and entertainment owner Ted Leonsis are expected to give a joint announcement about potentially bringing the two teams to the Commonwealth tomorrow. That meeting is set for tomorrow morning at 9 there at Potomac Yard. That's where we find our Marielle Carbone joining us live from Potomac Yard with the latest developments. And Marielle, this is a very big deal for so many people, especially those who live and work in that area. Yeah, it really is, Susan. So there is a lot of anticipation here in Alexandria. You can see behind me these white tents. Those are set up where we are expected to hear from the governor with that announcement tomorrow. So uh, this is yet again another major battle in the DMD to gain control over a major moneymaker. And again, we are talking sports. <laughs> After nearly three decades, the Washington Wizards and the Washington Capitals could soon have a new home, leaving Capital One Arena in D.C.'s Chinatown neighborhood and moving here to Potomac Yards, Virginia. I don't like the idea at all. It's a less than ideal plan for longtime neighbor James Haverty. Congestion, rent increases. There is space for more development here. But others like Z Johnson say they see the potential benefits. I think it's good to see the neighborhood get developed and, and to bring more more people here and more foot traffic here. The sources confirmed to our sister station in Richmond that a group of Virginia lawmakers approved a plan Monday to lure the teams owned by Monumental Sports and Entertainment to Alexandria, which calls for $2 billion in investment for a mixed use development, including a sports arena with 20,000 seats and a nearby concert venue. The full details tease to Wednesday when Governor Glenn Youngkin is expected to announce a quote remarkable economic development project. Losing our, our home sports teams um, would certainly have an impact uh, both economically, uh, but I also think there's an impact as to what it what it what it means in terms of the emotional connection. Jaron Price, president and CEO of DC's downtown bid, says the loss of the teams would be a major blow to DC's downtown. Uh, we believe that the city should and continue to do all they can to try to stay in the fight. Any potential deal is not finalized and would require votes at both the local and state levels. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what they're uh, what they're thinking about doing. Does not appeal to me. So keep the sports teams in DC. Keep the sports team in DC. And so based on that announcement of legislation from Mayor Muriel Bowser, uh, DC is saying that it is still in the fight to gain control or rather keep those sports teams in DC. Uh, Chris and Susan, the announcement here uh, by Governor, uh, Governor Glenn Youngkin is expected to happen at 9 a.m. Reporting live from Potomac Yard, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. Things happen quickly, Marielle, thank you. Last year, the owner of Monumental Sports and Entertainment, Ted Leonsis, expressed displeasure with the safety and quality of life surrounding Capital One Arena. That's right, according to a report in Axios, Monumental has paid for off-duty officers and pushed really for so many improvements there in the Chinatown area of D.C. 
Police data even showing that there were more than 80 more incidents within a thousand feet of the Capital One Arena in the past two years compared to 2019 and 21. That includes more robberies and crimes involving a gun. Last November, there was also that double shooting that happened after a concert right near the arena. Oh, meanwhile, moving on now to those major money problems for Metro. Well, Mata is trying to close a $750 million deficit. Otherwise, they're warning about a devastating blow to commuters and employees. If Metro cannot come up with that cash by next spring, 10 Metro stations could close with a 10 p.m. closing time at remaining stations plus slower service. Not to mention a 20% price hike for riders and half of Metro bus lines getting cut. And it's not just a concern for commuters. Well, Mata says it would have to lay off more than 2,200 workers. The union representing WMATA workers is calling on local governments in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia to come together and find a way to fund the transit agency fast. It would, you know, dramatically change Washington for the worse. Over the last, whatever, 50 years, they've made enormous investments in the metro, and it's a shame to see those go to waste. As for the 10 stations at risk of closing, Metro says those will be decided based on ridership numbers this winter. Developing right now a controversial and massive project that has really divided a northern Virginia community. Rezoning plans to bring data centers to Prince William County is the subject of a public hearing that started this morning, but it's expected to last well into tomorrow. How the eight county supervisors vote on the digital gateway project could really shape the region for years. Yeah, Northern Virginia reporter Max Marcilla joining us live tonight from Woodbridge to break down the project and what's at stake. But Max, let's start with the atmosphere where you are right now. I mean, they're in the midst of a marathon meeting. They are Chris and Susan all throughout the morning, afternoon and now into the night. People have been coming and going, waiting for their turn to speak to county supervisors and then waiting for those county supervisors to cast a vote whether they will rezone more than 2000 acres of Gainesville land for a massive data center complex. On a cold night in Woodbridge, there's no shortage of hot coffee. These folks will need the caffeine too. Inside the Prince William County Government Center, eight supervisors with a chance to reshape the landscape of the county of nearly half a million. Karen Sheehan and other opponents of the Digital Gateway Project are making their last-ditch effort to stop the project. If approved, supervisors would rezone more than 2,100 acres of land for more than 30 data centers. The area is adjacent to the Manassas National Battlefield Park, and critics of the plan say it could ruin the park and surrounding rural area, as well as harm the environment. We're going to lose our green spaces and... We're not going to realize the benefits that they keep on promising. You don't want to be the richest county in America. You don't want one of the 20 best public school systems in the country. But supporters say this project would bring in a ton of money that could go toward education and other priorities by some estimates, roughly $400 million a year in revenue. And that could lessen the burden on taxpayers. Oh, we won't sleep until tomorrow afternoon at this rate. The only thing agreed upon tonight is that it's going to be a long night. As of 6 this evening, more than 115 county residents were signed up to speak in person, with an additional 200 people registered to speak virtually. And with a nine-minute clock for each of them, a vote may not even happen before the sun comes up in the morning. Now, Democrats hold a 5-3 margin in the Board of Supervisors here in Prince William County. It's also worth noting that supervisors have shown some sign of support for this project in the past. About a year ago, uh, they voted to essentially change the planning guidelines to allow data centers in rural parts of the county, a vote that essentially set up the vote we're expecting here tomorrow. And Max, of course, this is a very polarizing issue here. The project first proposed back in 2021, but there has been some criticism here that this board is really rushing the vote. Why is that? So, Susan, it really all comes down to the fact that the board tonight and tomorrow is not going to be the same board 
next month and for the future years because the board's chair Ann Wheeler, a Democrat who has shown support for this project, she lost her primary and even though she lost to a fellow Democrat, Deshondra Jefferson, she has shown a, a, a indication that she does not support this project. So again, the board today and tomorrow will not be the same board as next month and critics are, are really frustrated that they feel this board is rushing through with the project even though their chair is a lame duck. Back to you. All right, some good tea tails there. Max Marcella reporting yeah. for us. That's right, it's gonna be a long night in Woodbridge and they yeah. have their coffee to stay awake, but also <laughs> to stay warm out there as well. It's a little chilly. I know Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb is here and Janessa, this is kind of temperate though for this time of year. Yeah, pretty seasonal bull air that we're sitting in. We're slightly below average. We should see daytime highs about 50 degrees uh, and overnight lows into uh, the lower to middle 30s. Upper 20s for overnight lows for tonight, but our city, it looks beautiful out there across all of the DMV. We have high pressure. It's in complete control and it's going to continue to kind of meander across uh, the region. So all this clearing continues to take place with little incident insulation from cloud coverage tonight. So it's going to be a crisp night into uh, tomorrow morning as well. Uh, temperatures right now look at inland locations. So the district 40 degrees and then you travel about 25 minutes into uh, Manassas, uh, chilly 29, 41 out towards Hagerstown. So this is uh, kind of divided across the region. Elevation, it does matter in this entire situation. So Culpepper into Rappahannock, you're in the into the uh, lower 30s. Wind speeds are coming out of the south. They're very light at this hour, 5 to 10 miles per hour. With this next week, a disturbance about to make its way across our region. Uh, we will see winds picking up uh, tomorrow morning into your afternoon. And so that will bring wind chill concerns. By 9 o'clock for your early morning commute, 8, 9, uh, we should be just above the freezing mark. Hey, I have more sunshine in the forecast, but our weather team wants to prepare you for a broader storm system that is going to be pretty impactful for your weekend. I'll show you which day coming up. All right, take a look at this video here. Smoke billowing from a school bus full of students in Prince George's County. Firefighters say a car rammed in the back of that bus with nearly two dozen students on board. The front of the car there, you can see it caught fire and spread to the back of the bus this morning. The bus driver jumped into action, got all those students to safety. Our reporter, Yamari Sase, covers Prince George's County. She's been following those students and joins us now live. And Yamari, boy, the outcome could have been much, much worse. Yeah, that's right. It could have been, but thankfully it was not. Now that bus was actually heading to Walker Mill Middle School here in the Capitol Heights area, and the incident happened on I-495 northbound near Pennsylvania Avenue, which is actually exit 11, and that's about 10 minutes away from the school, but several parents and community members that we spoke to say they're just happy that everyone involved made it out alive. A scary sight to see for drivers Tuesday morning on I-495. A car crashes into a Prince George's County school bus full of students on their way to school and a fire breaks out. There's no uh, rules in driving anymore. So people are just not mindful of that, especially when it comes to school bus. According to Prince George's County Fire Department, a car rear-ended the school bus on I-495 near exit 11, not too far from Pennsylvania Avenue. All of this happening just before 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Officials say the engine of the car is what led to the bus bursting into flames. The bus driver was able to evacuate all the students and nobody was injured. You can even see the students standing on the highway several feet away from the scene. Concerned parent, of course, I and other parents as well will feel kind of uh, horrific. And it's, it's a scary experience to hear something like that, especially that's the last thing you want to hear. The bus was on its way to drop students off at Walker Mill Middle School. The same school Shayla Johnson's child attends. She says it's very scary to hear. If it was my child, I would be very terrified. Prince George's County Public School says students and the drivers were picked up and taken to the school for further evaluation. I hope everything's okay. Now, I did speak to one student who actually rides that bus every single day, and gratefully he wasn't on the bus this morning, but he says several of the bus riders that all ride that bus with him every day were taken in for evaluation at the school, but did not come to class. He say a lot of them were picked up by their parents earlier today, and PGCPS did say that there were no injuries by this incident. For now, reporting in Capitol Heights, Maryland, I'm Yamari Sase, DC News Now.
Right, some quick thinking by that bus driver there. Yamari, thank you. We're learning new details about the moments before a deadly Tesla crash that happened this summer in Virginia. The Fauquier County Sheriff's Office says the Tesla was speeding on autopilot. Then moments later, it crashed into a tractor trailer. The Tesla driver, Pablo Teodoro, died. This is the third crash now since 2016, where a Tesla on autopilot ran underneath a crossing tractor trailer. It's really raising concerns about the safety of that partially automated system.